everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are on to page, I gotta double check, page seven of Little Girl. So we are making good progress. So this is gonna be my base. And of course, uh, this is my pocket page. It's gonna get installed on top of. Um, so the page seven is gonna be like page two in that we're gonna have these two slits. Um, so we're gonna have hidden hinges here and I'm going to tell you where I put them. So they're going to be on the right hand side, which is going to be a mirror image to page two. Doesn't really matter if you put them on this side, that's fine too. I just always do a mirror image. So for the first slit, it's going to be four inches in length and you're going to start at, uh, let me see, two and a half. So you're going to start at two and a half. You're going to run down four inches and stop. And it is in three, uh, quarters of an inch from the edge. So come in three quarters of an inch, you come down to two and a half and make your four inch slit. The second one is going to start at three inches and go down four, uh, start at three and end at seven. And that one is one and a half inches from the edge, the right hand edge of your uh, base mat. <clears throat> Sorry about that. You're gonna need two flaps, which are six and a half by four, and you're gonna score a half inch. So six and a half by four, score half inch, and they're gonna get installed right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the first one in. And again, you're gonna need two of these. Okay, and I'm just looking to see if it looks pretty straight. And here we go. Just gonna use my Tim Holtz just to see if it's sort of drifting up or down. And it looks pretty good. Um, it's right on. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of hold it into place, try to keep it from shifting, flip it over and get some glue on it. Then I'll turn it over and we'll do that same thing again just to see, just in case it shifted. We have just a few moments to work with um, because we're using glue. If we had used tape, we wouldn't have any time. So it does need to shift down just a little. There we go, it's pretty good. Pretty good. It's kind of hard to do these slits and make it straight. It's a little fussy. The other option is you just mount the back of the hinge directly onto the page. Um, I just wanted to try something different. I'd like to get your feedback. See what you think about this technique. I'm okay to directly mount the hinge on the page and then cover the hinge up some other way. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. Okay, so this one is gonna get installed here. Okay, I'm gonna check the distance on the side to make sure it's going in straight. And that looks good, so I'm holding it in place, turning it over, I'm gonna add my glue, and then I'm gonna double check again. And you don't have a lot of time because the glue does dry quickly, so, and I can see that it shifted. Um, actually quite a bit, so. Okay, looks good. Okay, that's that. And then the um, last piece is going to be eight by six, eight by six, and you're gonna score four, so you're gonna have a card when you're finished, and it's gonna get installed underneath both of the flaps, and I'm gonna glue it directly to the mat. And right now I'm just gonna look for kind of where I wanna place it visually. And I like to see this sort of stagger here. I think it makes it interesting, but there's real, really no science to it. When I get it installed, I'll tell you what my measurements are. I'm just gonna put a little corner here that I can erase. And I know that's my installation point. And I came down one and a quarter inches. And I'm about two, I'm sorry, one and seven eighths from the edge or two inches would be nice round number to work with. Okay. 
trying to decide. I think I want it to open this way, which is not traditional, right? <laughs> it feels op opposite of a card. Okay. I'm gonna come back with my uh, kneaded eraser and clean up any pencil marks I have. If any. Okay, that looks good. Let's open it up and burnish everything in place. Okay, that's that. And then the last piece is a die cut. So I just wanna make sure, I can't remember if I went over this already. I probably did in uh, on page two, but we're, I'm gonna tell you about it again. So you're gonna take um, the tag and pocket die uh, from graphic 45 and you're going to use the large what is considered the pocket part to cut out this piece and then you can see right here where it's split that is where the perforated lines are you're going to trim off the two tabs and then fold on the perforated and then leave about a half inch just so you can install it on your page and it's going to go like so and it's going to become the closure that holds these flaps in place and I need to look at page two. Yeah, so we're going to adhere this directly to the outside edge of this mat. We're not gonna create a slit. We're just gonna attach it just like so. And you're just gonna move it up and down until you see you know, what looks pleasing. I don't really wanna cover it like this. So I'm gonna come down to about right here, which turns out to be centered on this top flap, roughly, okay? I'm not gonna measure it, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Add some glue. I'm gonna turn it over and make sure it's pushed all into place. There we go, and then burnish that. Okay, and now we are ready to add some magnets, okay? Looks good. So we can add a couple magnets here. We're gonna have one on the back side here. And I'm going to use some double-sided tape to put it down. And at the moment, the tape I want is, oh, here it is, right in front of me and I'm not looking at it. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of, I tried gluing it down uh, on page two and it, it, I wasn't patient enough to wait for the glue to dry. So I'm gonna tape this one down. And um, I'm doing it this way because I like to usually lay tape on top of it but I'm so close to the edge here, um, I don't think I have enough room to, uh, to make sure that none of the tape is exposed when I put the designer paper in. Hopefully that makes sense. Because my tape that I normally use here is 5 8 and you can see I could potentially be coming too close to the edge for the mat. So I'm just gonna put double-sided tape on one if you're using your wonderful basic gray, you already got the tape on it. Okay. Okay, now we're ready to decorate. Okay, let me clean up a little bit. And we'll start laying in our papers. I think this is what I've got chosen. Move my dies. I just got everything in front of me right now. Okay. So, this is going to go here. And I'm just double checking dry fitting. It looks good. We're going to lay it down. Be careful when you're cutting the patterns um, because so much of this collection is directional. Um, like this side is universal, but a lot of the sides, a lot of them have hearts and you want your hearts to go the right orientation. So pay attention to when you're trimming your papers out and the orientation of the pattern. I had to change um, how I was placing a couple of the mats because I wanted to do something vertical, but I noticed that I'd done this and cut the pattern this way, so I wound up changing 
the orientation of the flap to accommodate what was that what I actually had to work with okay so that's one and then I'm going to do I think this is already trimmed no it's not or was I gonna do this yeah there and then I'm gonna choose something darker to go on the very top and something light to go on the flap so let me ink this and we'll put this in. Actually, I think this is what I had planned because this is the dark piece. And then I'm gonna put something light behind it. So that, that's, that is the plan. So let's go ahead and glue it in. By the way, I haven't been doing my, my cuts um, on camera, but pretty much I'm just using a straight, not pretty much, I am using a straight edge and a ruler. Um, some people have good success with uh, their paper trimmers and stopping and starting. I don't, I just have never acquired that skill. Um, so you can do that method as well, just as long as you've got that four inch slit. So um, my current, preferred trimmer is a rotary trimmer so it doesn't do stop start at all a blade trimmer will um, if you want to give that a shot but like I said I've never really had good luck with it I've never been able to keep a straight line so I just finally gave up and went back to my metal ruler and um, an exacto knife or actually I'm using a box cutter which is one of the cheapest tools you can find but I find it to be extremely reliable and easy to use so this really has some orientation, but because it is flowers, I think we can kind of cheat a little and I'm liking the way this looks. So that is what I'm going to, now so you can see there's orientation with the with the um, hearts down here, so I might rethink that. But I'd really like to find some of this, um, some more of these white dots, but I'm not sure I have any. So let's do a little quick inventory. So no. No, no. Mm. That's too strong of an orientation. This one could, is pretty universal, so let's see what it looks like. Mm, I don't know. I'm going to trim it. We're going to look at it. Okay, now at least it's the right length. What do we think about that? Because of this border and this border, I think it might be too much. Yeah, so I think I want something solid. So this is what I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with these polka dots. So I'm gonna see if I can't find a scrap before I cut into that piece. Um, I like this too, but it's like hearts and hearts and hearts, too much hearts, <laughs> too many. Okay, I'm not, oh yeah, yeah, I got a whole nother sheet of that, so. Given that, I am comfortable cutting into this. So I'm gonna need a four by six. Three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Okay. And then we're gonna add a little ink and put it down. for our flap. I'm gonna start two piles, one that's vertical and one that's horizontal. That'll help me with manage my scraps. And this can go either way. I actually kinda like that. That's what I think 
don't know. That might be too much of that pattern. I think I like the polka dots better. So I'm gonna use this to die cut this out real quick. Here's my cut. I'm gonna pause for a second because this makes a ton of noise. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I went ahead and I keep bumping into my die cut machine. Sorry about that. It's making a ton of racket. And trimmed out these two pieces to cover our closure here. So I'm just making my last minute decision on uh, what's gonna go on the inside and what's gonna go on the outside. That's pretty, but nothing else on this page is this pattern. So what page, we're on page seven, so I'm not sure. Let me look at page six real quick and then I can decide Hmm, I don't have page six in fr front of me because, huh, I guess I misplaced page six. I'll have to locate that. I wanted to see if this pattern was on page six. I'm not real sure. So I'm gonna hold off on making that commitment for the moment. This side I can go ahead and put down. And I think I wanna do the dots to pull this back in. This is the last option. And I think when I do this, it kind of disappears. So we're going to put the dots on the inside. And then I'm gonna hold off, it's gonna be one of the two sides and I'm leaning toward that, but I wanna see what's on page six. So I'm gonna hold off for the moment and I said page six. What am I thinking? I have to rethink that. Page one, two, this is seven. Yeah, I need to see what's on page six. So obviously I'm building it out of order. That's why I don't know. Um, and usually I have a little um, bag of all the trimmed out papers and I, I can't seem to locate it. So it's here, I just can't find it in my chaos. Okay, let's get some glue on here and we'll put, we're gonna mount it uh, to the pocket page. Make sure the pockets are on the left and right when you go to mount it. I thought I was going to drop my paper. I hate it when that happens, but I recovered. Okay, there we go. That's in. So I'm going to open all the flaps and burnish everything into place. Okay, so all our A-sides, well, not all our A-sides, but we're close. Uh, most of the A-sides are done, so I'm going to take a break and prepare the B-sides and then also make my final decision on uh, what's going on the A-side of that closure. That's it. So I'm gonna keep this with this, go trim out my B-sides, and when we get back, we'll do the B-sides, and we'll also cover this closure. And that will be it for page seven. Thanks, everybody. I'll be back soon. Hey, everybody. It's Daphne, and we're on to the B-side of, I gotta think, Oh, did I get that wrong? Yeah, that's page six. So we're on the uh, B side of page seven. Page seven. So I was going back and forth on which side to use. We're gonna use this side. And actually this is the A side, but we'll do the rest of the B sides as soon as I get this laid in. And this pulls the pattern in from page six. Okay. All right, now I've got my bees. 
all here in a row. All right, so we have a card on the very center. I'm gonna dry fit real quick and then we're gonna get some ink. It looks good. And it looks like I got a little pencil mark up here. I'm gonna go ahead and take a minute to get that off. If you don't have a kneaded eraser, boy, they are so nice. They just don't leave a mess on anything. for a second and it looks great so it just needs a little ink and glue oh choices choices do we like this that's awfully busy or this oh this that's another option what do you guys think? These wound up being the scrap pieces left that I trimmed off of the um, 12 by 12s when I was making the eight by eight base mats. Um, so you may not wind up with exactly the same set of scraps, but you get the gist, right? You can blend. I think I like this the best. And here's why. So I've got the the dots, the dots, and the dots. So dots are on both the outside edges, which I kind of like. It just feels cohesive. I got too much glue coming out there. So I think white is very pretty and appropriate for a little girl in a baby album, but I gotta tell you, man, it's not very forgiving. Um, you got really gotta make sure you're keeping the glue off your hands and not dragging um, debris around. Okay, I'm gonna make these be um, like bookends. So first I'm just gonna dry fit it, and it looks good. Get some ink on it. So one tip when you're done trimming out your your mats is to take your scraps. You're going to have four, one four by eight scrap and one four by twelve scrap, and put them in stacks of um, orientation. And what I mean, uh, so some of them are going to be vertical and some of them are going to be horizontal. So I stack my scraps in the orientation and that way as I'm going through and I know I've got a, a vertical or a horizontal flap that I'm trying to fill. I have to go through every scrap. I go through the scraps based on the orientation. It's a little bit of a time saver. Okay, so here's my last chance to make a decision about bookends or staggered. I'm going to do the bookends, which was my original plan. It's sometimes hard to tell until you get one piece of paper tacked down because they shift around on it so much it's hard to get a, a real sense of what it's going to look like. Okay, there we are. So let's go ahead and flip through this. Again, this is page seven. 